So this is the solution for the problem stone game. It's labeled medium, but it's uh, it's sort of a troll kind of problem. We're going to discuss the actual DP solution, which is more generic and can be applied in all cases. But the constraints of this problem allow the answer to be of just two keywords. We'll come to how and why that works in a second, but first let's discuss the DP solution. Now, first of all, how do you even think that there's DP involved in this question? Well, the best way to look at any question is take an example test case and see how you would work around it. We'll take the case of 5, 3, 4, 7 here. And each time uh, the green represents Alex and the blue represents Lee. Each time you would either take the first or the last element. In case you take 5, the array would look like 3, 4, 7. And in case you take 7, it would look like 5, 3, 4. The scores are represented in purple like so. Now, what do you notice in the next iteration? Again, you can take either 3 or 7. And this is the case where you take out 3. This is the case where you take out the 7. Same for 5 and 4. What is one thing that's really obvious to you? Is that there are overlapping sub problems. Well, this problem looked like a solid one on itself. When you broke it down and took it further in the second step, you were able to see repeating patterns. In case you remove 7 from 3, 4, 7 or 5 from 5, 3, 4, both of them will give you 3, 4 as the resultant. Now, uh, we can go on and continue this and say that even in this next iteration, there are lots of overlapping sub problems. And so it makes sense to think about it in a recursive and a DP kind of method. Now, any inferences you do draw from these kind of variables is uh, purely circumstantial. So let's not focus on that. And let's actually build up our logic. Now, one thing that I used there was this notion. And this is something we'll use to simplify the problem. We're looking at Alex as positive and Lee as negative. At the end, we'll just consider the total of whatever Alex and Lee had combined. And if that is greater than zero, Alex wins. If that is less than zero or this condition is false, then Alex loses. Pretty simple. And this sort of uh, condensation makes a lot things a lot more simpler to understand what's going on. Cool. Now let's actually go ahead and implement the DP solution. And we'll have our DP function here. And each time we need to keep track of two indices. What are these two indices? This is saying I want to start from somewhere and I want to go till somewhere or to somewhere. Whatever is in between is the consideration of whatever the piles array is. Anything uh, beyond that is already considered. Anything inside of that is something to be considered. Now, one thing that's now again obvious is that this recursion would end f when f is greater than t. Because at that point, both of these variables cross and there's nothing in the middle. This middle is just nothing. So we'll return zero. Now, there's the next thing you want to notice that Alex will always try to maximize his score and Lee will always try to minimize his score. Now, again, that, that is obvious. Alex wants to maximize and Lee wants to minimize. That's why we also given them negative and positive values respectively. Okay, now how do you figure out whose turn it is? You need to know whose turn it is so that you can either maximize or minimize. We can do this by saying that, okay, get me t minus f. And t minus f is best and we'll do and one here and I'll explain it what it means in a second. Cool. Now let's consider this array. Each of the indices are the elements themselves. 3 is at the index 3 and 0 is at the index 0. In the first case, t is this 3 and f is this 0. The difference is 3. In the next case, whatever case you take, the difference will always be 2, either 3 minus 1 or 2 minus 0. This sort of alternates as is now should be obvious. And if this is odd, then I want you to return the maximum of things. And that is even written the minimum of things. But of what things? Consider how we 
and look at the problem. We want to look at either the first element or we want to look at the last element. But this first element, it doesn't mean anything on its own. Only when we consider what happens after we have taken the first element and dp of f plus one comma t, then we can get the closer to the solution. In a similar case, this will only make sense if we consider things from f till t minus one and we'll sort of pass on this problem to be solved on later. We only consider about f and t right now. That is the heart of the solution. Now let me just copy paste it and there's a very small change when we do to consider the minimum. This piles just become negative in both these cases. Why? Because we're considering Lee as negative player. Even if he picks up a stone of five points, he would get a score of minus five points. That is exactly what he wants. That is how he exactly thinks like. So it makes sense. At the end, we'll return dp of zero to length of piles minus one because we're dealing with indices. And we'll just say if it's greater than zero or not, like so. If it is greater than zero, then that will return true. If it's not, it'll return false. Accordingly, meaning that Alex has one or Lee has one. Now, this is almost all the solution, but if you actually run this, you'll get a time limit error. That's because even though we've called these functions dp, there is actually no dp in place. Let's actually do this. So we'll call lru cache as none. None says that there is no upper limit to the size of how big this cache could be. And that means good news for us. So now every result would be cached. If we've already seen a sub problem like this, we already know its answer. And we don't know just this answer, but the best possible answer Alex could get, which is sort of the entire reason why we have this sort of tree-like structure. At the end, to figure out what's the best possible case of either this or this. Now, if you actually run this, let me just uh, do it here. By the way, these are time limit exceeded just for this reason, not implementing LRU cache. Now, this is actually a very, uh, like it's a more generic sort of solution, but the actual solution is just this. And that is a very good reason for it. See, there are a couple of constraints given to you that sort of make this very obvious. One of them is sum of piles is odd, so there will always be a winner. There is no tie. Now you know for a fact that either Alex is going to win or Lee is going to win. What else? The piles dot length is even. This is sort of the key point where we can say that the return true is always going to be true. Like this solution will work. And that's because Alex can always pick greedily. He can always select the bigger element, leave the lesser one for Lee. Now Lee always have to pick one of the lesser elements and Alex can again pick on bigger and bigger and so on and so forth. Uh, the proof and the solution is uh, can be explained by mathematical induction and I think they have done a decent job here. So yeah, that's it. This solution will also work. Let me just show you right here. And yeah, so again, like this is kind of a troll question, but uh, the DP solution is what really matters. And uh, yeah, that's it. If you learned something or if this helped you, let me know in a comment section or drop a like. If you have any more questions that you want me to do, I'm more than happy to hear them. Uh, let me know down below again. And as always, thanks for watching.